Okay, so before we start, give her chapter 14. He's got the bad memory. Jonas has requested it. What would you give Jonas as a bad memory right now? Like if I'm the giver, I'm thinking one of two people. I'm thinking either Justin Bieber or Logan Paul. I, I don't know which one I would pick. I might have to go with Logan Paul. Just Jonas would be freaking out. I, I, anyways, I digress. Giver, chapter 14. It was much the same, this memory, though the hill seemed to be a different one. Steeper and the snow was not falling as thickly as it had before. It was colder also, Jonas perceived. He could see as he sat waiting at the top of the hill. But the snow beneath the sled was not thick and soft as it had been before, but hard and coated with bluish ice. The sled moved forward and Jonas grinned with delight. Moving forward to the breathtaking slide down through the invigorating air. But the runners this time couldn't slice through the frozen ex expanse as they had on the other snow cushioned hill. They skittered sideways and the sled gathered speed. Jonas pulled at the rope trying to steer, but the steepness took control from his hands and he was no longer enjoying the feeling of freedom, but instead terrified was at the mercy of the wild acceleration downward over the ice. Sideways spinning, the sled hit a bump on the hill and Jonas was jarred loose and thrown violently into the air. He fell with his leg twisted under him and could hear the crack of a bone. His face scraped along jagged edges of ice and when he came at last to a stop, he lay shocked and still feeling at first feeling nothing at first but fear then the first wave of pain he gasped it was as if a hatchet lay latched in his egg slicing through each nerve with a hot blade is in his agony he perceived the word fire and felt flames licking at the torn bone and flesh he tried to move and could not the pain grew he screamed. There was no answer. Sobbing, he turned his head and vomited onto the frozen snow. Blood dripped from his face into the vomit. No! He cried, and the sound disappeared into the empty landscape, into the wind. Then suddenly, he was in the annex room again, writhing on the bed. His face was wet with tears. All right. Pausing for a quick second. I'm thinking that memory is a lot worse than Justin Bieber or Logan Paul. I apologize, Justin Logan. That, I don't want to experience that at all. Back to the book. He sat and looked down at his own leg where it lay straight on the bed, unbroken. The brutal slice of pain was gone, but the leg ached horribly still, and his face felt raw. <clears throat> May I have... May I have relief of pain, please? He begged. It was always provided in his everyday life for bruises and wounds, for a mashed finger, a stomach ache, a skin knee from a fall, a fall on a bike. There was always a daub of anesthetic ointment or a pill, or in severe instances, injection that brought complete and instantaneous deliverance. But the giver said no and looked away. Limping, Jonas walked home, pushing his bicycle that evening. The sunburn pain had been so small in comparison and had not stayed with him. But this ache, it lingered. It was not unendurable as the pain on the hill had been. Jonas had tried to be brave. He remembered that the chief elder said he was brave. Is something wrong, Jonas? his father asked at the evening meal. You're so quiet tonight. Aren't you feeling well? Would you like some medication? But Jonas remembered the rules. No medication for anything related to his training. And no discussion of his training. At the time for sharing of the feelings, he simply said that he, he felt tired and that his school lessons had been unusually demanding that day. He, w he went to his sleeping room early and from behind the closed door, he could hear his parents and sister laughing as they gave Gabriel his evening bath. 
They have never known pain, he thought. The realization made him feel desperately lonely, and he rubbed his throbbing leg. He eventually slept. Again and again, he dreamed of the anguish and the isolation on, a, on the forsaken hill. The daily training continued, and now it always included pain. The agony of the fractured leg began to seem no more than a mild discomfort, as the giver led Jonas firmly, little by little, into the deep and terrible suffering of the past. Each time, in his kindness, the giver ended the afternoon with a color-filled memory of pleasure, a brisk sail on the blue-green lake, a meadow dotted with yellow wildflowers, an orange sunset behind mountains. It was not enough to, the, to assuage the pain that Jonas was beginning to now to know. Why? Jonas asked him after he had received a torturous memory in which he had been neglected and unfed. The hunger had caused excruciating spasms in his empty, distended stomach. He lay on the bed, aching. Why do you and I have to hold these memories? It gives us wisdom, the giver replied. Without wisdom, I could not fulfill my function of advising the committee of elders when they call upon me. But what wisdom do you get from hunger? Jonas groaned. His stomach was still hurt, though the memory had ended. Oh, some years ago, the giver told him, before your birth, a lot of citizens petitioned the committee of, the, committee of elders. They wanted to increase the rate of births. They wanted each birth mother to be assigned four births instead of three, so that the population would increase and there would be more laborers available. Jonas nodded, listening. Mm, that makes sense. The idea was certain that family units could accommodate an additional child. Jonas nodded again. Mm, mine could, he pointed out. I mean, we have Gabriel this year, and it's fun having a third child. The committee of elders sought my advice, the giver said. It made me sense them too, but it was new, a new idea. And they came to me for wisdom. And you, you use your memories? The giver said yes. And the strongest memory that came was hunger. It came from many generations back, centuries back. The population has gotten so big that hunger was everywhere, excruciating hunger and starvation. It was followed by warfare. Warfare? It was a concept Jonas did not know. But hunger was familiar to him now. Unconsciously, he rubbed his own abdomen, recalling the pain of its unfulfilled, of its unfulfilled needs. So... You describe that to them? Well, they didn't want to hear about pain. They just seek the advice. I simply advise them against increasing the impopulation. But you said that that was before my birth. But they hardly ever came to you advice for your for advice. Only when they, what was it you said? When they have a problem they've never faced before. When did it happen last? Do you remember the day when the plane flew over the community? Yes, I was scared. So were they. They prepared to shoot it down, but they sought my advice. I told them to wait. But how'd you know? How'd you know the pilot was lost? I didn't. I used my wisdom from the memories. I knew that there had been times in the past, terrible times, when people had destroyed others in haste in fear, and brought their own destruction. Jonas realized something. That means, he said slowly, that you have memories of destruction, and you have to give them to me too, because I have to get the wisdom? The giver nodded. But it will hurt, Jonas said. It wasn't a question. It will hurt terribly, the giver agreed. But, but, 
but 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 why can't everyone have these memories? I think it would seem a little easier if the memories were shared. You and I wouldn't have to bear so much by ourselves if everyone took a part. The giver sighed. Oh, you're right, he said. But then everyone wouldn't be burdened and everyone would be burdened and pained. They don't want that. And that's the real reason the receiver is so vital to them and so honored. They selected me and you to lift that burden from themselves. Well, when did they decide that? Jonas asked angrily. It wasn't fair. Let's change it. And how do you suggest we change that? I've never been able to think of, the, think of a way, and I'm supposed to be the one with all the wisdom. But, but, but there's two of us now, Jonas said eagerly. Together, we can think of something. The giver watched them with a wry smile. Why can't we just uh, um, apply for a change of rules, Jonas suggested. The giver laughed. Then Jonas, too, chuckled reluctantly. The decision was made long before my time of yours, the giver said, and before the previous receiver, and he waited. Back and back and back, Jonas repeated the familiar phrase. Sometimes it had seemed humorous to him. Sometimes it had seemed meaningful and important. Now it was ominous. It meant he knew that nothing could be changed.